Hello, Syngap land. My name is Michael Gralia, and this is episode 116 of Syngap 10, your 10-minute weekly briefing on everything you need to know about Syngap 1. Today is Monday, September 18th, and this is the week of Global Genes. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to fly down to Global Genes and meet all the other parents out there who are starting groups or leading groups or just have a sick kid and they want to go to a conference. Global Genes is the conference. If you go to one conference the whole year, after, of course, going to the Syngap 1 conference, it should be Global Genes. They are best in class. And I'm really excited to go there because I'm really energized lately about everything that's going on. Let me get some congratulations out of the way and then I want to tell you a story and a few other things. I want to congratulate Alan Burke. He jumped out of a plane in the UK to raise money for Syngap. Whatever it takes, Alan. Raised over a thousand pounds. Very exciting. Good job. Links in the show notes. You can donate and still support him. I want to congratulate Aaron and Monica Harding who did an interview on a military podcast about raising Jackson and, and, and the life and challenges of being a military family and having a Syngapian. I think it's great for awareness. I can only imagine what that's like, even though I listen to the podcast. They, there's a long intro to this podcast, so start around minute seven to hear Aaron and Monica talking. It's, it's worth it. I want to congratulate our friends at Beacon Biosignals. They had a sleep headband, which just got FDA approval. I am giving them a hard time and saying, when can we get these headbands on our kids? When can we start collecting data on Syngap 1? So if anyone knows anyone at Beacon, be like, hey, guys, let's let's get some rare disease data going on. I want to congratulate Suzanne Jones, um, who has netted over $300,000 with the Syngap soiree back in August. Thank you, Suzanne. We are reviewing grant proposals right now. There are some really compelling grants, and that money will help us advance Syngap science. And I also want to congratulate Katrine Deckers, who did her debut on Syngap 10 in the last episode just recently. Watch episode 115 to hear Katrine talking about being at the ILEE meeting in Dublin, which I mentioned in episode 114, and, and her reflections. It's really important to know that SRF is led by many people, Vicky Artiaga, Katrine Deckers, myself, Pavel. There's so many good people, Hans, JR, Marta. I could go on and on and on. I've skipped the UK, Ray, Julie, Dawn. There's so many good people. And um, I'm excited when we get to when we get to profile them. So congratulations to all those people. And then I also want to mention before I go into my story, um, there is a webinar in two Thursdays on September 28th. Dr. Andy Stanfield from University of Edinburgh is doing a presentation on behavior, cognition, and sensory processing in people with Syngap 1. That's bound to be exceptional. Links in the show notes. Please register. Um, and also, I was I was talking the other day to a, an industry partner, and they wanted to understand our patients better. And I did a presentation over a year ago now to the FDA in the context of the ORCA. And I was just going back over it to share it with this industry partner. It's actually really good. So if you're new to this, links in the show notes. Go watch that presentation I did to the FDA. Half of it was on Syngap just general slides and half of it I, I blew through some patient profiles and I think those would be really helpful to watch so again congratulations to Alan and everybody else who's doing great things sign up for the webinar on September 28th learn something it's good to go to those things live because you get to ask the clinicians and the researchers questions live and those questions often really help inform their work so you're doing us a favor by asking questions and you're doing them a favor by, by giving them new ideas like that's how this work is done and then watch that presentation I gave to the FDA to learn more about our patients. So before I go into things that are coming up, because there's a lot coming up, I just want to thank and applaud one family. Um, I'm sure they'll do their own thing, so I don't want to use names, but relatively young couple who just had child number four and um, immediately knew something was up. And before his second birthday, they were able to get a Syngap 1 diagnosis. And then mom and dad both just got on the internet, started talking to people very quick. And of course, all the people they were talking to were part of SRF because we're the ones out there supporting patients. And people started saying, hey, you got to talk to this family. Hey, you got to talk to them. Like, Who are these people? So I, I, I got on the phone. Turns out they're in California. And I was talking to them and, and they were driving through the state. And I said, well, you guys should stop by. So they stopped by and, and we had dinner and hung out for a night. And it really reminded me why we're all here. Because there are still young families being diagnosed with young children and it's happening every day. I mean, I see the data. My, my computer, every, every week I get new information on new families. But, but it was really helpful um, for me to sit at a table with this young couple and, and hear their questions live and look at their baby and look at them and look at my son and, and just see the dominoes falling in their head. And it, it, um, it's not easy. 
but it's important to remember that those of us who have sick kids need to do everything we can to make their, those sick kids' futures better. And there's hundreds, soon thousands of other kids right behind our kids who are also getting diagnosed. And all the work we're doing for all of our babies is also going to help all of their babies. And when those patients get diagnosed and those families walk in and they very quickly start asking questions and we have answers and, and then they realize, oh my gosh, you guys have been hard at work and there's already a hundred, there's already over 200 people in Citizen and I can learn from that data and I can answer that data. And there's a natural history study at CHOP and I can benefit from that and I can sign up for it. And there's already grants that are before SRF and I can just raise money and those grants will get funded. Oh, thank goodness. And, and, and honestly, guys, it really inspires me and motivates me that even though life is getting pretty challenging over here, I, I, just, can't, I just can't stop. I just, we have to keep pushing. We are getting there. We are getting so close. Um, I promised you in episode 114 I was going to walk through my slides. I haven't done that yet because honestly, I can't quite figure out how to do screen sharing and recording on a Mac. I know there's like a thousand articles about it, but when I try to do it, something goes wrong. So anyway, I still owe you that. But the other thing I'm going to promise you that hopefully I'll get to you soon is I've written sort of a, 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 my thinking on the strategy of SRF. We're having a very dynamic board conversation right now about what we should fund and what we should prioritize. And I think it's really important. And, I, and as soon as the board says, okay, Mike, we don't think you're crazy. Um, I, I want to share that also on this podcast so people can understand how we think about things and how we make trade-offs because there's a lot of thought and work that goes into everything we do. But um, really motivational to hang out with this this family and see this 21-month-year-old little boy and know that, and to be able to say to mom and dad, which I said, because they were asking me questions, well, when will this happen? And when will this happen? What does our future look like? I said, look, guys, I can tell you this based on what we know of the population, but you your child will probably have an ASO stuck into their brain in a few years. Like, I can't tell you what this little boy's future looks like because we're busy making that future better. That felt really good to say. And it's a little terrifying because, you know, we don't know. But pushing forward with everything we've got to help these kids afflicted with this terrible disease is the only acceptable option before us. So let's talk about how we're going to do that. This week, tomorrow, I'm going to fly down to Global Genes and I'm going to talk to industry partners and academics and other patients and we're going to find ways to collaborate and move things forward faster. I'm going to see a lot of my friends from Combined Brain there. Um, that's this week, Global Genes. If you're near San Diego, come. Next, this weekend, I guess on Saturday, oh no, I should mention Vicky will be there too. She's presenting on DEI as she does. She's amazing. Next, this weekend, 923, Vicky's having her second uh, round table in Spanish. So for all the Spanish-speaking clinicians, and researchers, we're going to have an amazing uh, online workshop. On October 4th through 6th, Brett, Peter, Monica Harding of previously mentioned podcast and Reese from UFT Tech are going to do um, the third cannonball and raise some money, which is exceptional. And if you want to meet um, Brett and Sydney Stelmazic, who are the founders and creators of the cannonball, go ahead and listen to Syngap Stories episode 12. On October 7th, Julie Miles in South Carolina is doing the Scramble for Syngap. It's going to be an amazing golf event. I strongly encourage all families, plan an event. Year one, start small. Year two, it'll be easier. By the time year three rolls around, you'll be cooking. I mean, the Scramble, the Gala, the Soiree, all of these events that we do make a huge amount of difference, guys. Huge. And of course, Cannibal. Um... On October 15th through 17th, JR and I will be at the Park City Epilepsy Meeting talking to researchers and really trying to push push the future, pull the future into the present, I should say. On October 21st, Nancy Kessler's doing the gala. So it's, it's, it's the season, right? It's the fall. It's when everything goes down. And then, of course, on November 30th and December 1st, we are having the science meeting and the family meeting. So tell your neurologists and your pediatricians, more your neurologists because they'll be going to AAS, about our meeting on November 30th. They need to go to that meeting. It's important. They're going to learn so much. The agenda is incredible. I was looking at it today. And then December 1st, we'll have family day. I do encourage families to go and sit in on the science meeting just to sort of be like, oh my gosh, and to just get a headache, but to realize how much is going on. And then 
on um, December 1st, we'll, we'll dissect that. And then, of course, the day after that, a lot of families will be in Orlando. We'll probably go to SeaWorld. Um, the SLC 6A1 kids are going to Disney, so there's like a little SeaWorld versus Disney thing happening right now. I, I think SeaWorld is better for Zingapians, personally. So that's, that's where I'm going to go. Um, the links for the sh conference are in the show notes. You can register. You can book a hotel. We have a great room block. We're all staying at the Embassy Suite. It's going to be amazing. Get a T-shirt. And then, of course, it's never enough, right? So we want your time and your blood too. We want your data, your time, and your blood, right? Share your data on Citizen. It is HIPAA compliant. It is part of a large organization. They have great lawyers, great tech, everything safe and secure. And by sharing that data, and, and it gets into the hands of industry and researchers, and, and then people are able to work on Syngap One, guys. It is so important to share your data on Citizen. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, email me. Um, sign up for the Natural History Study at CHOP. They are quite full. But they are, they are trying to get in as many people as possible. I'm really excited about that. And I'm grateful for that opportunity. You should be too. Sign up for CHOP. Links in the show notes. Go to the flyer. End at chop.edu, I think is the link. E-N-D-D -D at chop.edu is the email. Just email them. And then volunteer. Join us. Syngap Research Fund is here for every family with an affected Syngapian. There's something you can do. You can project manage, you can write press releases. I'm so backed up on press releases, I can't even tell you. There's so many ways you can help and we don't have any other choice, guys. This, this is it. This is our kid's life we're working on here and if you've got a minute to spare or an hour to spare or more time to spare or an aunt or an uncle or grandma or grandpa, whatever, send them to us. There is work to be done and we have, we have to make the future better for our kids. Um, if you are near, Liberty Township, Ohio, this weekend, we are doing blood draws through our partners at Combined Brain. We need the blood of Syngapians and their um, siblings in order to do our biomarker work. I've talked about this before, but basically, we cannot look for biomarkers for Syngap until we have blood from patients and their siblings, and we're collecting that all year. The last of the collections will be at our conference, and then we will be working with an industry partner to um, look for biomarkers of Syngap-1, which are super important. And then in Chicago, September 29th, we will also be collecting samples. So if you're anywhere near Liberty Township, Ohio, or Chicago, go and collect samples. If you're coming to the conference, do it at the conference. But if you can do it before then, get it out of the way. The conference is going to be very busy. Thank you for listening. I will be coming back to you with, I owe you three things. I owe you now an update on Global Genes. I owe you my slides, which I will be walking you through as soon as I figure out how to screen record. And I owe you um, my nascent grant strategy that I finally articulated. Thank you for all your support for SRF. Stay in touch. And if you have comments, questions, or concerns, drop me an email, mike at curasingap1.org.